Welcome all you Sagittarians to your July monthly reading where we've been focusing on a chakra each month starting all the way back in January. So here we are in month number seven and we've reached the crown chakra. So we've got all this beautiful amethyst, which is the color of the crown chakra to focus in on that. Since we are focusing on the crown chakra, what we're going to be looking at for this reading is how we can connect higher during the month of July. If you are new to my channel, what I do each month is I take a tarot deck and I split out the major arcana from the four suits of the minor arcana. And the major arcana here, this represents the overall energy for the month of July. So just what the creator would like you to know about your energetic experience regarding, um, in this case, connecting to the heavenly realms, to the higher realms. So we'll start off here for our Sagittarians. What would you like them to know? But the overall energies for the month of July. Okay, but like this one right here. And then we're also going to pull a card from the Universe Has Got Your Back deck and see what other energies they would like to add on to that card. All right, so what else for our Sagittarians, please? Okay, they do want that one right there. And we will start with the tarot card first, which is the full card. So definitely a new beginning, jumping off into something new, a new adventure. That also represents for me the soul card. So this represents definitely connecting and taking time to, to really develop this relationship and understanding with your higher self, with that spiritual side of yourself. And then you also have this beautiful full moon here and it says the presence of love will always cast out fear and that makes so much sense so you're of course your higher self this full here uh represented by this card the full is a being a powerful supernatural eternal spirit being made of unconditional love and in that place they have no fear you know, on the other side, we, we know that we don't end, that we are eternal. And, but to experience and understand ourselves more fully, we go down to this adventure. We leap off into this place where we get to experience fear, which is the opposites of who we are. And this is a great example here. You know, if all you were was this giant bright, you know, light, and you were surrounded by all of that, you wouldn't see any difference. You wouldn't be able to see a distinction. You wouldn't, um, you know, have the definition, the defining meant of who you are. But when you're surrounded by darkness, then because you have a contrast, you see things so much clearly, right? And so that's what this adventure is about. And I really feel like connecting to your higher self and, and focusing on this relationship with yourself, your higher self during this month is what helps you connect to the higher realms. It makes total sense. But we will get more details here as we dive into the four suits of the minor arcana. Now the four suits of the minor arcana represent like four different areas of our human experience that we have uh, as a human upon this earth. We'll start off with the wand suit, which is the fire element. And this represents our drive, our ambition, our inspiration, our passions. Um, also represents your energy, overall energies, uh, like your inner energy as well as your spiritual energy. And because for this reading, we will use the spiritual energy side uh, to ask what the Creator and Spirit want you to know about your spiritual adventure during the month of July in regards to connecting higher. So for our Sagittarians, what would you like them to know about connecting to their higher realms? All right, they want this one right there. And we'll also pull a card here from the Return of Spirit deck. Let's see what else they want you to know about your spiritual adventure there. So far, our Sag, what else? Okay, that one right there. And we will start off with the tarot card, which is the Seven of Wands. So the Seven of Wands is about <laughs> seeing that you are in this higher ground 
and not to be afraid that you'll have to defend yourself. Yeah, some people, as you spend time taking time away, you know, to yourself and um, moving into a higher place, the people that ha aren't making that step yet, um, or those that are kind of bound into their fear and their human uh, side of their, you know, adventure, they may be like, what are you doing up there? Why are you being so happy? Why are you so connected to that love? Come down here and be miserable with the rest of us because misery loves company. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't even have to defend it because you're at the higher ground, which is the definitely the place to be in any kind of you know conflict that might uh, arise in our life because the higher ground is the best uh, place to be. People that are in the lower trying to battle and move uphill you know, don't do very well. My brother, he's in the military. He would explain it to me. Yeah, higher ground is where you want to be in a battle because um, you see everything that's going on and it's hard. You, know, you can, especially in the olden times, they could roll down boulders and hay stacks that are on fire and uh, flood oil down the side and set it on fire. You know, there's, <laughs> there's this uh, defensive stance that is great to be at the higher place, but I don't feel like it's this energy of you have to be defensive. It's just just the knowing that you're in a better place because you're at the have the higher advantage being on this higher this higher area. Let's see what else I want to add to that here. Yep, here you go. So connecting to your divinity. Yep. So exactly as we've been talking about here. So when you're in that divine place and you realize that you are eternal, why would you care about what anyone else would would have to say or do or anything? Because you're aware of the powerful being that you really are. You're not uh, intimidated or ignited into defense mode because you're just like, yeah. You know, it's like all the movies where you see, you know, these superhero um you know movies even like superman and all that where someone comes up with like a gun and he's like go ahead shoot me and just bounces off of him he's not afraid of that and that's kind of the, the energy i'm picking up from that i also want to read from the book here uh, cheryl lee harnish the connect uh, the creator of these cards the author explains things so beautifully here so it says, you are a beautiful, wise, and loving soul who has braved the perils and difficulty of incarnation to be here on earth in service to humanity. You uplift the energy and consciousness of others through the work that you do, whether you're aware of it or not. There are billions of souls residing on the planet at this time, yet only a small number of them are here to help humanity evolve to its fullest potential, and you are one of those souls. Wow. Who you are is a gift to this world. Even at the best of times, it can be difficult to remember this, especially when being human feels so real. Your connection to spirit is much stronger than you think. You are a living, breathing channel of the divine. It moves through you in all that you do. It flows through the words that you speak, even when you don't intend it to. In every situation, you are a transmitter of the higher cosmic energies and wisdom. It is those who have the greatest gifts who most often face the biggest challenges in life. So hold your head up and keep your faith. These challenges are the means to seeing and understanding the strength, wisdom, and compassion you hold within yourself. On a higher level, your soul chose to have a direct experience of the trials you have faced. Through each event, you have become better equipped and skilled so that you in turn could help others. You are a very special soul. We're all talking about the soul, soul, soul with an important part to play in the healing and betterment of the people of this planet. You're born to be in service to humanity uh, through the divine gifts and knowledge you have carried with you into this lifetime. You're here to ignite the light in others to realize their own divinity. Love it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. 
Can't add more onto that. We've already talked about those things in both of these areas already. We are moving into the element of earth, which is the pentacles or sometimes called coins. And where this is your spiritual energy, we'll talk about your thoughts and your emotions. All that's your inner world. This is the only suit that's the outer world. So these are all the people that are on stage with you and all the props like your body, your possessions, your bank account, just everything in the external world. So it's what the Creator wants you to know about your physical adventure during the month of July in regards to connecting higher. So for our Sagittarians, what would you like? Oh, yep, okay. <laughs> there we go, we got the Three of Pentacles there. We're also gonna pull a card here from the Angels and Ancestors deck. Let's see what else they would like to add onto this. That Three of Pentacles is so perfect, which we'll talk about in a sec here. So what else for Sagittarians? Okay. So the Three of Pentacles. This is you creating this beautiful work of art, sharing like it was talking about here in this Divinity card about what you have been brought here to do. And it's, it's really cool because what Spirit gave me is, you know, there's two people in here. Sometimes they'll show someone like on this side and you in the middle and them on this side. And usually um, what Spirit gave me a little story about, you know, there's one person in here who is um, not supportive of that individual. They're the naysayer, the dream buster that goes, why are you doing it that way? You should do something else. You're never going to do any good at that. Blah, 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 right? And we know what we do with them. We put them on the outer circle, you know, we don't have them on our inner circle of our friendship because we're like, there's only so much of that that we're willing to take. And when we understand that, then there's the other person that is the supporter of what you're doing. And they are, you know, they're so proud of you and, you know, you're going to do so well with this. And I'm excited to see where you go. Now, they might have even more power to take us off our authentic path than that naysayer because the naysayer is so obvious but the person who is supporting us they might add on not with any ill intention usually they'll be like you know you're doing so well da, 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 da. have you ever thought of doing it this way and because we don't our little child inside of us likes that validation likes that support we don't want to lose that we fear losing their support and them going over to the naysayer camp that we might adjust our path to go a little more in the direction that they uh, mentioned. This card is the message about your creativity. It's about you staying to your authentic path, not to look to the naysayers out of fear to adjust anything or for those that support you out of fear of losing their support but knowing that you are supported like it talked about i think it talked about in this one here about you're supported by the heavenly realms that you have such a group of support with the creator and spirit and your guardian angel and your angels and your spirit guides and loved ones on the other side your ancestors just this whole slew of beings of unconditional love and light they're behind you and they are supporting you and there's nothing you can do to lose their support because they support you and love you unconditionally nothing you can do to make them lose that so you have that and so they are like stay your course follow your dreams try not to listen and be distracted by the outside world and all those things rooted in fear that are drawing you in a different direction yeah and you have the winter card the wolf and it says take care of your needs <laughs> so yes take care of you follow your dreams don't get uh, pulled away right like we were just talking about and i think winter yeah the seasons are in back here so let's see what message comes with this for you yeah do everything you need to be at your best then move beyond your fears and limitations for many of the animal realm, winter is a time of hibernation and retreat. You may wish to curl up in a ball too, but although you may not feel as bright as you'd like to be, a primal force within is encouraging you to continue. The winter card features a wolf, one of the few animals that stay active all year round. 
Wolves know what it's like to work alone or thrive within a pack. So if you feel you need to go it alone at this time, know that the wolf medicine will help you move beyond your insecurities and relax in your own space. <laughs> so pack lone wolf and that, you know, this was basically saying, uh, stay to your own during this time. You have an opportunity to move beyond your fears, like we talked about here, um, where it says the presence of love will always cast out fear. So you have an opportunity to move beyond your fears. And although you may feel in the dark, get comfortable with being in the unknown and trust that the light within you will sustain you through what may seem a challenging process. Ask yourself what you need to do to feel supported and alive. You may uncover something from your past that you have buried deep. And know that when you unearth it and shed light on it, you create space for miracles. You may feel like a lone wolf right now, but it's time for you to be the alpha. When the winter card arrives in the future position of a spread or, okay, which is, we're not doing that kind of reading here. Um, sometimes it can indicate the coming winter will usher in important energies with regards to your questions or intentions, which in the Southern Hemisphere, we are moving into the winter um, solstice. Uh, which is coming up in uh, next month. So you, uh, for some of you that are in the Southern Hemisphere, that could uh, definitely mean this for you as well. And then we're going to move into the air element here, which is the sword suit, and that represents the mind. So it's all your thoughts and your beliefs, your mindsets, your um, attitudes, your expectations. So this will be what the spirit wants you to know about your mental adventure during the month of July in regards to connecting higher. So for our Sagittarians, what do you want them to know about their mental adventure and connecting higher? Okay, they do want to that one right there. And we'll pull a card here from the numerology deck to see what else they would like to add onto that card. All right, so what else for our Sagittarius? <laughs> okay, right off there. And we'll start with the tarot. And you do have the Three of Swords. So this represents your fears. I mean, this you can see the pain in, with all these three swords stuck into our heart. And this is where our fear comes from. Our fear comes from uh, the disappointment, the pain that we think we will feel and that we've been told we must feel when our expectations are not met or we don't live up to someone else's expectations. We fear disappointing others and being rejected by them, and we fear that others will disappoint us. And each of the swords represents a different part of our life. Uh, one of the swords represents relationships, and that can be romantic. It can be family, friends, work, um, school even your fur babies, feather babies, relationships. Uh, the second sword represents like circumstances or situations that you can get into, whether it's job, education, social status, things like that. And then the third sword is things like our bodies, our bank accounts, our possessions. And all of those things end up disappointing us because they're temporary and unstable because Relationships, people change or they pass away. Situations never ever stay the same. And things in our bodies break down, deteriorate, are stolen or burned down, right? So those things end up disappointing us and they're unstable. And so that's what brings us the pain and the fear that comes in. But it's the love that we connect. Um, and when we're connecting to the higher places, we connect to that unconditional love that we were talking about, right? The unconditional support. And that does uh, cast out those fears. Let's see what else we have here. We have effort, card number 13. We'll put that right here. Let's see what that adds on to that message here. Yeah, so this card indicates a time when extra effort is required to overcome your current obstacles and challenges as you are now being tested and your attitude is the key, which we were talking about. This is all your thoughts are your attitude, right? 
Rather than surrender to self-pity, laziness, negativity, or frustration, you can utilize your inner power for you are, a, I'm sorry, you are stronger than you think. When the going gets tough, the tough uh, must get going. So pull yourself together and have faith in your success. By drawing this card, you're being encouraged to call upon your inner and outer resources to achieve the outcome you desire. Rather than succumb to quick fix solutions, shortcuts, or manipulation, you can plan, focus, and act with tenacity and drive. With effort and determination, you will break through all restrictions that are presently holding you back. Never ever give up and your success is granted. Yep. So it is talking about uh, putting the effort and the energy into changing your focus. Instead of focusing on all of these things, all of these fears, connect to your divinity, really, right? This is going, going inward uh, and connecting to those inner sources that you have in that unconditional love and the divinity, the divine. This is what is coming through so clearly here. And then we move into the final suit, which is the water, which is the cup suit, water element, and it represents your emotions. So this will be what Spirit wants you to know about your emotional adventure during the month of July in regards to connecting higher. So for our Sagittarians, okay, that one right there. And you have the King of Cups. This is so perfect because right there in his hands is the chalice, the Holy Grail. And what is in that? That is the unconditional love of the creator of all things. That is the living waters. And the king, he's the highest you can get in the emotional suit. So the highest emotion that you can experience is that unconditional love from above. So this is very much about taking... Um, I want to say control, but um, but taking control of how you're approaching your emotions, how you're looking at things. So controlling the direction, controlling the focus, it, it's in your hands. You always get to choose what emotion you feel in any moment. Um, even though we are, like I said, with all these expectations and early in our lives, we're taught the popular opinion of when this happens, this is how we're supposed to feel. So we have that kind of habit of choosing whatever that popular opinion was that we were taught and it's become our reaction. And so this is about responding to your emotions rather than reacting to them. And again, the presence of love will always cast out fear. So this is definitely is focus on love, love, love. We also will pull from this elemental oracle. Let's see what they would like to add. And since this is the last oracle card that I'm pulling for your reading, this can also be a wild card. So in addition to possibly being what they want you to know about your emotional adventure, it can be whatever else the creator wants you to know about the energies of July. So for our Sagittarians, what's your final oracle message for them for this reading, please? Okay, that one. And you have discipline, time. Yep, so there is this taking uh, importance in this, and that is card number 41. And it says, find out the causes of your procrastination or your resistance. Do not miss your opportunities. Someone is wasting your time, so be aware of this. You have finite time on this planet, so use it well. And I like that with this effort that it talks about here. It's understanding these emotions and these thoughts. Who is taking up space? Like who's renting space in your mind and your heart that you, you can use it for other things? <laughs> It says, as you grew up, time seemed to pass very slowly and you couldn't wait to grow up. Then, conversely, as you aged, time went quickly as you knew it was running out. So we have an innate idea of time, but what is it actually? Physics says time is what a clock reads. Simple. Time has also been defined as the continued 
indefinite progress of existence, but it's hard to put a definition to the word without actually using the concept of time. We normally refer to time and what it can do for us and what it means. Humans initially broke time down into measurements of light and dark, day and night, when the sun rose, when it began to circle around the sky, when it set, when the moon rose and continued its arc. So as humans became more sophisticated and began to break down these phenomena into hours, minutes, and seconds, we learned how to accurately measure time, although many different cultures had just as many ways to express time through their calendars. So the study of measuring time is called horology. So time is an important element in the way it combines with other elements, the speed of light, the velocity of an object, space, time, and gravity. An element of this is air. And I kind of fig, you know, because we we're talking about air element down here with all this uh, expectations and attitudes and putting effort into here. I kind of feel like it's like it's time to uh, really make space for this new love. And in questioning these and looking at your thoughts and these beliefs, um, as you understand and see that contrast with the divinity, it comes down to this understanding the contrast. Everything happened on purpose for a purpose. These were not wrong, right? You came down here to experience that darkness, to understand the light more. And it's like this is the time for you to reconnect in a very strong way to that unconditional love of who you are, right? This divinity, this higher self, so that you can... Um, see that contrast and you can uh, adjust and make this change in your life to where you are living this auth authenticity in your life and expressing yourself in the way that you're wanting to express it because it did talk about you're here on purpose for a purpose to share this and so you went through all this like it said so that you would be able to understand what other people are going through and this is that time it's like I kind of hear like a, a school bell ringing, like it's time for that class to end and you're ready to go into this next place. Your final cards, we're going to pull from these star seeds cards. And these are just the final messages that the creator has for all you Sagittarians. So creator, what's your final message for our Sagittarians, please? Okay. That one is there. So we got that one. What else, please? And they do want that one. What else? And that one. All right. So we'll start with this one, which is inner alchemy. And that one says, inner alchemy is achieved when you react to fear with love. <laughs> I just want to hold these up. <laughs> like, I mean, you can't... Uh, <laughs> They're almost exactly the same. So that is your inner alchemy is choosing love over fear. And then you have abundance. And that one says, when your heart's intention is to serve humanity, doors of abundance naturally open, which is what this one was all about. What we talked about with that divinity card and your authentic self. And then you have earth guide. Your final message says, your sacred calling upon this planet is to simply love and be loved. <laughs> and there you go. You're definitely here. I mean, this divinity card talked about that too. I mean, you came here on purpose for a purpose to help mankind move to this new level and connecting to this love of who you are. You're able to offer that chalice to the world, this unconditional love to the world. But you get to express that and share that authentically in your own unique way. So, you know, don't get trapped by the these definitions and expectations of, oh, this is how you share that love with the world. You know, oh, you have to do it like Mother Teresa did or like this person did or this person did. It's like, no, we don't need, we had one of them already. We don't need another one. We need you to express your unconditional love in your own specific unique way no other way otherwise it's not your authentic self and we we want you to express who you are that love 
with the world. So love this for you Sagittarians and if you are looking for more messages of love from above in addition to these monthly readings I put out by each zodiac sign I also put out weekly energy updates for each of the zodiac signs and a few other types of videos throughout the month so if you don't want to miss out on any of these and be notified immediately when they become available if you give this video a little thumbs up click the like button also click the subscribe button and that gives you access to the notification bell and when you go in there if you select the all option then you'll be notified of any new videos that come out on the channel also doing those things help spread the love and helps my channel grow in significant ways because when you like a video or you share a video um, comment on the video um, and also if you subscribe to the channel doing those things makes the youtube algorithm so giddy and excited it wants to share the videos of my channel with other people as well so if you feel inspired to do any of those things i am definitely grateful for that also these are general readings and if you were looking for more specific information and answers for your specific life i do offer personal readings and all that information is listed in the description box below all right, mighty Sagittarians, as you go through this amazing month, please know that every second of every day of your life that you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things and a host of beings of unconditional love and light. And of course, I also love you too. Have an amazing month. I'm sure I'll be talking to you very soon though. In the meantime, you hang in there and you take care.